Welcome, application of differentiation and integration in kinematics, the acceleration of a particle t seconds after passing fixed point p is given by a is equals to 40 minus 7 given that the initial velocity of the particle is 5 meters per second, find a its acceleration when t is equals to 4 seconds, 1 mark, b its velocity when t is equals to 3 seconds, three marks c values of t when the particle is momentarily at rest three marks and then we have the last one here its maximum velocity three marks so that is the question uh, let's go to the first part of the question and solve it so in the first part this one is straightforward uh, you're given the acceleration the expression is given there and you're required to give the acceleration when t is equals to 4 seconds. So what you just need to do is take that expression for acceleration. And uh, in place of t, you just substitute with the 4. So when t is equals to 4 seconds, just take the expression the way it is. So 4 multiplied by t, t is 4 seconds. Then subtract 7. As simple as that. So this will give uh, 16 subtract 7. And this will give 9 meters per second squared. So that one is just a matter of substituting t is equals to 4 in that expression. Part B, its velocity when t is equals to 3 seconds. How do you find velocity? There's something I'm going to draw here that will help you. Uh, when you're given distance or displacement s, um, you differentiate that to get velocity. You differentiate velocity to get acceleration. That is what we call the downward movement. Downward movement, we do differentiate. What about uh, the upward movement? When you're moving upwards, like this. Maybe you're moving from acceleration. You're given acceleration. Like in this case, we have acceleration. We're required to get velocity. So in that case, you're moving uh, upwards you have to integrate you're given velocity you're required to get displacement you do integrate so any upward movement either from acceleration to velocity or from velocity to distance you integrate downward movement you differentiate in this case you're given acceleration and you're required to get velocity so you're going to integrate so to get velocity in this question we shall integrate acceleration and the expression for acceleration is given here a is equals to 40 minus 7 so you're going to integrate 40 minus 7 and this one you are differentiating with respect to t with respect to t so when you integrate this of course you know how to integrate you get velocity so integrate 40 you get 40 squared divide by 2 then you integrate this constant negative 7 to get negative 7 t then don't forget to add the constant of integration now once you get that you can simplify this this is uh, 4 is equals to this will be 2 t squared minus 7 t plus c so once you get that you need to get now these uh value of the constant how do you get the value of the constant now in the question there's something that you're given that will help you you're given that the initial velocity of the particle is five meters per second this is the initial velocity and what do you know about the initial velocity at initial velocity so at initial velocity time will be zero and you're given that at initial velocity, when time is zero, uh, V of velocity is given as five meters per second. So when you substitute V is equals to five meters per second in this expression, and T is equals to zero, you shall get the constant. So let's do that. So V is equals to five. Then when you substitute whatever you have T, put zero. So you'll end up with C is equal, this will be 0, 0, so you'll get C to be 0, or C to be 5. So now we have the value of the constant, so therefore, now the 
expression for velocity will be this 2t squared subtract 7t plus 5. Now that is the full expression of velocity. Now we've got to answer the question. Now what is the velocity when t is equals to 3? So when t is equals to 3, just substitute here. So v is equals to 2. Then substitute t with 3. So this will be 3 squared minus 7. This will be 3 plus 5. So that is what you're supposed to do. So in that case, you just use a calculator to work out that. Use a calculator to work out that. And get the answer. So use the calculator to work out that. So you have 2 into brackets, 3. You have 3 squared. So this will be 3 squared. Subtract 7. 7 to bracket, this is 3 then plus 5 so this will be 2 meters so this will give 2 meters per second so that is a solution now let's go to the next one uh part c values of t when the particle is momentarily at rest now you need to know that when the particle is at rest um, the velocity at that point will be zero so at rest at rest, velocity is zero. So what you need to do is just to take this uh, expression for velocity and then at rest, when the particle is momentarily at rest, the value of V, velocity will be zero. So velocity is given by 2T. So 2T squared subtract 7 t plus 5 that is expression for velocity and when it is as, as the rest it will be zero so you notice that you form this one is um, a quadratic equation and when you solve this quadratic equation you get the values of t or time when the particle is momentary at rest so to solve this you can use the suitable method i will use the factorization look for two numbers whose product is 2 times 5 which is 10 and their sum will be negative 7. So these two numbers are negative 5 and negative 2. So let me just go ahead. So 2t squared. You can use quadratic formula as well. You can use quadratic formula as well to solve this. So 2t squared subtract uh, negative 2t minus 5t plus 5 is equals to zero uh, so 2t squared minus 2t 2t is common here then i'll have a t subtract one then this one negative 5t 5 negative 5 is common so you have t subtract one is equals to zero so this one will give a 2t 2t minus 5 multiply by t minus 1 is equals to 0. Now when you're multiplying two numbers and the answer is 0, then it means that uh, it is either it is either 2t, this is a 2t minus 5 is 0, so 2t minus 5 is 0. And when you work out this, uh, you'll get t will be 5 over 2 or 2.5, 2.5 seconds. That is the first time when the particle is momentarily at rest then the other one is uh, t minus 1 t minus 1 is equals to 0 and uh, this is the case t will be 1 second so we have answered the values of t when the particle is momentarily at rest so the particle is at rest when t is equals to 2.5 seconds and when t is equals to 1 second so what was needed there is just to understand that at rest, uh, the velocity of that particle will be zero. Then we go to the next question, the maximum velocity. Now to answer this one again, you need to understand that what happens at maximum velocity. At maximum velocity, and this is at maximum or minimum, or minimum velocity of the particle, uh, acceleration will be zero at maximum or minimum velocity of that particle 
its acceleration to be zero. So we just need to find the values of t, that is time when it attains maximum velocity. And to do this, we have the expression for acceleration, which is given there as a 4 t minus 7, you are given that. And so at maximum velocity, a will be zero. So just uh, substitute a with zero, acceleration with zero. So this will give the time when this particle attains maximum velocity. And this will be 7 uh, divided by 4. 7 divided by 4. And this will be 1.75. So 1.75 seconds. This is the time when this particle attains maximum velocity. This is the time. But we have not answered the question. Now, what is the maximum velocity? This is the time it attains maximum velocity. So to get maximum velocity, we shall go back to the expression for velocity. We had it as a 2t squared minus 7t plus 5. So just substitute this. When, uh, this is the time when it attains maximum velocity. So t when t is equal to 1.75. So we just substitute 2 into bracket 1.75 squared minus 7. 1.75 like that and then uh, plus 5 simple as that so you just substitute like that and this one will give uh, let me use a calculator here so 2 into brackets 1.75 uh, squared subtract 7 into brackets 1.75 then plus five so this will give as you can see it is giving a negative this will be negative 1.125 meters per second and this one is a negative speed so this means it is a deceleration and that is how you're supposed to solve that question thank you